Blog Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Bat Cave, a new series of fast-paced 30-minute political shows aimed at opening the, ho- the eyes of America as to what is currently taking place in our country. I'm your host, Batmobile, and our guest today will be Trez Burden, a conservative African-American Tea Party patriot from New Jersey, who will be talking to us about the black community in America and how he believes we can spread the conservative message to them in the hopes of gaining their votes for the 2012 elections. Welcome to the show, Trez. All right, all right. All right, now, Trez, first I'd like to ask you your feelings as an African-American about President Obama. How did you feel when he got elected, and have your feelings changed today? Okay, well, at the time of his election, that November 2008, I was still a Democrat. I was in, I was in transition, but still a Democrat at the time. But when he was elected, I felt... Somewhat, I, I felt a sense of pride because they, uh, well, I felt like I'd witnessed something that none of us thought we would see in our lifetime, you know, right. given our history in this country. So the thing right. is, there, there was a sense of pride there. But the thing is, like, right after his election, before he even became president, and I started, like, just seeing, like, uh, the direction he was going in because, you know, he, you know, his whole thing was, yeah, we're going to hit the ground running. And then he was making all of his moves already. And some of the names of these radicals were, were, were already start beginning to surface. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I began to question him. I mean, like before the inauguration, because by, by the time of the inauguration, I had already lost my Obama high. Because I, I, really? I was on, like, somewhat of an Obama high uh, the night of the election, but i say by the time of the inauguration, I had already lost my high. So, well, you know, it's, was, it's, it's, it's a natural thing to have that kind of pride because, you know, like my, my family comes, originates from Cuba, and I figure, you know, if, if you got somebody, let's uh, Marco Rubio, who's, who's of yeah. Cuban uh, heritage, if he became president, I'd, feel, I'd probably feel the same way. But then, you know, if something would happen that, you know, to change my opinion of him, I'd be like, uh, maybe, you know, it, you know, you realize, hey, it's more than, than just about, you know, the nationality. It, it has to do whether this person is serving the best interests of the American people. Exactly, because the thing is, there's a part of you that that will feel pride. But the thing is, though, you shake that off quickly. And it it the job he's doing will take, you know, that, that will matter more. Because the thing is, uh, even if McCain had won, and I, I didn't like McCain, and I wasn't paying attention to Palin yet, and um, because right. the only thing, because I was still listening to R and B radio and stuff at the time, and then so uh, again, 2008 was that was my transition year. So the thing about it, I was hearing all of the superficial things about her, so I wasn't a Palin supporter yet. So the thing, right. so the thing about that is, uh. I was listening to Rush and Levin because as a trucker, I, I got to go into this because this is actually how I became conservative. Um, in 2007, I became a trucker, and then like just uh, I would turn to AM radio, just waiting for a traffic report or something. It, like like right. I would I would be waiting for uh, the traffic report, and then um, what what would happen was I would catch other things like crude prices and. You know, things I never paid attention to, never meant anything to me. And I was just catching little bits and pieces of, like, other perspectives, like a a perspective of things that I never heard. Because up to that point, I was still watching Bill Maher and mainstream news and stuff like that. So just to give you an idea how jaded I was up to that point. So, um yeah, uh, so well, it's fully it, understandable. It just kind of crept in. It snuck, it snuck up on me. Conservatism, the conservative message actually snuck up on me. So, what was the uh, the key? What, what was it that you said all of a sudden? You know, this isn't what it should be, and, and you started to uh, change your ideals as far as the party. Well, the thing is, it made sense. It's like because I've yeah. always been a sensible guy. I just had never heard the conservative message. So the thing is, when 
Well, you know, I heard so. And, and the funny thing is this: Bill Maher is who is that's who turned me on to Rush. I just used to hear huh. bad things about him like all the time, and I got sick of hearing his name to the point where I'm like, I, I got to find out who he is for myself. And then I listened that one day and haven't missed his show since. So the thing is that that was a good thing. So th- these things were happening like just like all in that same year kind of, like like between 2007 and 2008. All of these things were, happen- were happening and leading me like just more towards the right. And, right. and what really got me is when – Everything Rush and Mark and and Sean Hannity, everything that they were predicting, because I was listening to them by then, but I, I still felt like I was a Democrat though. And um, right. when everything that they predicted started happening, like just started coming true right away, as soon as Obama got got in power, I was like, yeah. these guys were right. And mm-hmm. that, that's and then uh, shortly after Liberty and Tyranny came out, you know, Mark's big book. It, it came out like weeks after Obama was inaugurated, and then I read that, and then that provided the definition I needed, and every and I, I haven't looked back since. Now, how did you discover the uh, the tea parties, and how many how many tea parties have you attended, and uh, you know how have you been received by the uh, tea party community when you? Attended Ooh, these that is an parties? interesting question. The uh, I was hearing a lot about the tea party, and. Um, you know, um, and I'm a curious type. If I hear enough about something, I just have to see it for myself. So the right. thing is, uh, you know, I, I just kept hearing tea party, tea party, and, you know, and, uh, you know, because in the beginning it was a joke, you know, like uh, if you watch TV, you know, they, they were making a mockery of it. So uh, the thing is, um, I started hearing about local ones, like nearby. You know, uh, right. well, you're in New Jersey too, so you you know these towns. Uh, uh, the first one I went to was in Summit, okay. and um, because there there were a bunch of them going on. I believe it was for the Fourth of July or Memorial Day. It, it was on a holiday. I don't remember exactly, but it was in. This uh, is what it was in, in, in two thousand and nine. Two thousand and nine. Okay. And they and this is when smaller tea parties were just going on all over the place. So um I went to one in Summit. Let me stop right. and see what's going on here. And um and I had my Liberty and Tyranny book in my hand. Just so, you know, I'm like, okay. It's a conversation starter. That's what I, I, I use things like that for for that reason. And um Yeah. And so it, it, there was a guy up there speaking. You know, everybody. It was it was, it was real, uh, it was a real casual thing. I, I didn't know what I was going to see, but um, everybody just dressed casually and walking around and passing literature around. And you know, they had a donation pot. I dropped something in there, and you know, and people. I, I was uh, I stood there and I was listening to the speaker. It was a. Uh, it was a guy, he, he was talking economics and, you know, just things I never knew because, uh, believe it or not, I was, like, oblivious to quite a few things. I mean, I, I was, like, I couldn't believe I was that much in the dark because I was, like, 35 by then. I, I was right. 35 years old and hearing, like, a, being concerned about a lot of these things for the first time in my life. So people... Well, it's, it's different when you have a family. You've got You've got kids, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, well, you become concerned. Uh, at that point, it's it's no longer you know, hey, it's this is the message, this is the future of, of my uh, my kids, my family. You know, I have to look out. So maybe what these people are saying, you're probably thinking, you know, I have to follow what they're saying because there might be some uh, validity to it. Yeah, and then plus those things that I was that I was hearing on the radio, they started to t- like you know, I started tying that stuff into real life. You know, it could because. Uh, for you know, all through my twenties and everything, you know, I I was making less than fifty thousand a year, you know, and um, for the first time, two thousand seven was the first time I had what I considered a big year, where I made right. a decent amount of money. So you know, okay. um, for the first time, I saw the other side, like right. uh, I I wasn't on the receiving end, I was on the giving end. And I I had a boss, 
that used to tell me these things, but I guess I wasn't ready. I was still in my 20s having a good old time. So, you know, I guess I just right. wasn't ready to hear it yet. So um, the thing is, though, when when things he was saying began to come began to come true for me, you know, when I finally made it to the other side where I was paying taxes, I yeah. had no idea that it was legal to take that big a percentage of someone's money. I was like, hmm. is, 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 I, I was outraged. I was like, and it is totally legal to take this, take this much of a person's money. He was like, <laughs> now you get it. He's like, you're starting mm-hmm. to get it. Yeah. But then, but, but so, it's back to the so did you did you share question, this? Uh, yeah, did you share you this know? message with people at the tea party that you know were your concerns? Oh yes, I do. Uh, uh, yes, I did. I'm I'm very talkative at tea parties because okay. I um at my first tea party everybody was approaching me. I was the only black guy there. That I'm sorry, there was one black lady there, an older woman, and um. Right. I guess she she was behind the table and she was taking the donations. So I guess she had she was part of the team that organized it. So um, the thing is though, oh my God, everybody was coming up to me. Hey, uh, we're we're glad you're here. You know, like like just one by one. Hey, it's good to see you. Glad glad you're a part of it. Like just one by one. And then this one lady, she was like just asking me a lot of questions because. Right. Uh, because a lot of people, I, I guess, uh, I guess with blacks, a lot of times we don't take kindly to you know being asked questions. Like uh, I think we're real protective when it comes to like you know, we feel like people are probing when when they ask us questions about like uh, how we feel about certain things in our community and stuff like that. But um, yeah. me, you know. I I don't I I've never shied away from questions like that. So I, I I and plus I feel like I I felt like it was coming from a good place. I, if I felt like you know I was being condescended to, then you know I know how to respond to that. But I didn't get that vibe. I felt so like what what kind of questions were they asking? Like uh, why? They, okay. They were asking quite. Let's see. Uh, that very first tea party because I, I answered quite a few questions that day. Um, well, basically, they probably wanted to know your feelings, you know, as as a black person as to what was going on. I'm, I'm guessing that they wanted your take on it because they wanted to say, okay, how can how can we, uh, you know, spread the message to to black people that all we want is our country back? Yeah, and 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 yeah. two, Obama mania was still going on at the time. His like he was still pretty hot at the time. Like, like I wasn't on him like that, but in 2009, pretty much through 2009, he w- he was still extremely popular. Yeah. So the thing is, it was it was scarier then because it's like, oh my God, you know, like uh, th- th- in 2009, this was when everybody was still scared to say anything about him. You know, like uh, white whites were like uh, just being called racist if they said in- anything about this guy and. Yeah. He just had a complete green light, you know, like uh, he owned both houses of Congress and, you know, he, he had it all. 2009 was his year. He he had it all. The guy got anything he wanted. Mm-hmm. And, um, <clears throat> and I was just beginning to understand, like, uh, socialism and Marxism and all this stuff because, you know, again, th- this this was all brand new to me. But Do you get a lot of the information the, from – who did you get the informa- a lot of the, your information on, on uh, Marxism, communism? Was it Glenn Beck or, or uh, Rush Limbaugh? Uh, well, in, in order, I started listening to Rush first, but he didn't touch on a lot of that stuff. Uh, the, the way I began to learn about Marxism was through Levin. He would always okay. touch on the uh, Karl Marx and uh, Alinsky. He Mark Mark Levin used to touch on that stuff all the time. So he was right. the one that made me curious about that. And okay. uh, you know, and I just really began to like. Uh, I, I just really began to see like uh, where things were were going. And you know, for every stone you unturn, you know, there, there's. Ten more that you have to uncover. So you know, for oh, yeah. every book you read, there, there, there's like ten more that you have to read. 
Absolutely. So, so the thing is, I, it's like uh, I'm, I'm about three years in now as far as uh, being conservative goes, and, you know, it's like I'm nowhere. I feel like I'm just scratching the surface, man. It, it's like I did not I did not realize that as a country it's a, we were It's so a learning hard experience. I, I, I had a, no idea. Yeah. Well, you, the more you read, the more you're like, oh, my God, how could we have been blind after so many years, you know? Um, now, have yeah, you done any? Like uh, ha, ha, have you done any community organizing of your own? And uh, as a black conservative, how do you try to convey your message to other blacks? Okay, well, that um, that uh, that kind of ventured off from the from what I picked up at tea parties. All okay. right, and I realized that uh, like in our community, and and you may understand this way of thinking. But it's just like Democrat good, Republican bad, period. Nobody really knows why. We have no idea why we vote Democrat or anything. We we have no idea why we support them. We just do it because it, it's like uh, it's just it's generational now. Maybe yeah. my parents' generation, my, my parents are like 60s Democrats. So maybe they, they know why they were Democrats, but uh, – any generation after my parents' generation, it was like, you know, just automatic by then. So I had to say that to say this. I realized at tea parties how much attention a black conservative can draw. Because yeah. I had no idea we were that far gone. Again, all of this was new to me. So I realized from my first tea party or two just how much attention I could get. So I said, okay, you know. I can put this to use, but I didn't feel right. ready yet because I felt like I was so because I felt like I was so far behind because I, I was already like thirty five. I, I was thirty six the first time I read the Constitution. I, I'll share that wow. with you. I'm thirty eight okay. now, and I, I was thirty six the first time I read the Constitution. But that's great. So, um, I mean, you know, you you get you're getting it. You, you know, you're absorbing all this and realizing, wow, you know, we're so far gone from the government we're supposed to be. Yeah, so the thing, I mean, and when I sometimes I think about the, there are millions of me out there. You know, I'm like, you know, I was walking around clueless for 30 something years. I'm like, there, right. there's mil, millions of me walking around in, in these big cities, you know, Chicago, LA, and stuff. So I'm like, I have to do something because the, the, the stuff that I learned. You you can't know this stuff and just sit on your hands after after you discover these things, because right. I love America. I mean, even I, and and that's something I always knew. Even like as a Democrat, I've always like loved America. I, I I took great pride in America. You know, being the number one country and being free and you know just like yeah. that. You know, that's I've always appreciated yeah. it. And right. I was even proud, like, uh, I was always proud of my birthday. Like, when I was um, when I was in, like, first, second grade, I, I don't know what grade you're in when you uh, first start learning about the presidents and stuff. But right. when, I, when I first found out that I was born on Thomas Jefferson's birthday, I, I took pride in that. I well, mean, that's even great. at a very young age. You know, I take pride in my birthday, too. I was born on the 4th of July. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah, I can, you know, I can... <laughs> Yeah, I know exactly what you what you mean because you know, it wasn't until recently I'm saying, uh, why is it that I have this strong this strong love of my country? And then I started thinking, well, yeah, I was born on the 4th of July, but it's got to be more than that. So, yeah, I I'm guessing that it has something to do with the birthday, but um I don't know, you know, as far as far as you're concerned though, you look at it and you say, how do you how do you turn that as far as you were born on the same day as Thomas Jefferson? How do you, you know, how do you tell other people, "Hey, you got to be you got to show pride, especially you know in the black community. Say, show pride. This is this is America. How do you do that? How do you tell the people? Well, there's a there's a lot of undoing. That that's a that's something. Um, it, well, well, I'm trying to get my craft together as far as community organizing go because goes because uh, the thing is, uh, I know that I have to do it because the way the black community is. And given our history in this country, because this, this is something I put a lot of thought into. Because um, right. at first I felt insecure. I felt like I had a lot of catching up to do. 
like in 2009, I knew I wanted to do something, but I wasn't ready. I wasn't well read. I'm like, I, I have to know what I'm talking about before I start trying to, you know, reach out to other people. So, right. you know, all through 2009, 2010, I was just reading, 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 like, you know, just learning everything I can. You know, I was, like, obsessed with it. And now yeah. I feel like I'm in a stage where I'm ready, I'm ready to break out of my shell. It's, it's about to get warm now. I'm like, this is it. It's time to do something. So, um, Yeah, so you're loaded I, with all this information, and it's time to share it. Yeah. And so I took what I learned from the tea parties, like, because uh, at every tea party, I, I just, like, I'm like an attention getter at these tea parties. I mean, they are, like, so happy when they see blacks involved in it. And it's the total opposite of what the average black person may think. They are so, like, what, like just the, the, white, the whites there, they are so happy to see you. Right. Like you, you cannot believe it. They are so happy to see you. They come up to you, you they know, hug you, they talk to you. I bet you the feeling is it's like a sense of relief because they probably feel, you know, that, that they're alone. It's like when, when they see a black person, they're like, oh, good, you know, some of them are getting the message that you know we we you know we love each other. It has nothing to do with with color of skin. It's just it's about trying to get the country back together again. That's the message. And you you said it perfectly. It's almost like they're relieved. Like, oh yeah. my God, thank you. It's not just us. Like, even if right. they only see one or two of us. Because mm -hmm. I think white people understand that blacks are gonna have to pull other blacks in. Right. That's something I understand. I understand that blacks are gonna it, 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 I don't know it, our community is just structured like that. We the same message that we won't accept from a white person, like say maybe a, a someone running for local office or something like that. The very right. same message that they wouldn't accept from a white person, they may accept it from me, and that that's why I feel the need to get out there. That's I exactly feel like right. I can help. I can help some of the right people get elected. So, you know, just by sharing a message that you know that they won't accept from that from that politician. So what do you think, Trez? What is exactly what do you think the best way is to get the blacks to vote with the conservatives in 2012? Because we're going to need that vote if we're going to if we're going to take the country back. Well, I had an experience recently in a barber shop where the guy the guy was trimming me up, and then um, I was like, uh, you know, I had just gone to an event in Washington D.C. And then so I was like, uh, yeah, I really needed a haircut last week. Uh, I was like, I was down there in Washington, D.C. And then the guy was right. like, oh, yeah, I was like, yeah. Um, I was like, they um, had a lot of the, the uh, people running for uh, the uh, – a lot of the presidential candidates for 2012 were down there speaking. And I said I saw the uh, House speaker, you know, and I was like uh, telling them about the event which I didn't think he would have any interest in, but, you know, you got to take your chances, you know. And usually right. I, don't, I don't dive in. I just kind of dip my toe in the water and see what kind of vibe I get. But yeah. if, if I sense any interest, I keep going. So that's how I do it. And then the guy was like, he was younger than me. I'm guessing he's in his mid to late 20s. He, so he was like, oh, yeah? And I was like, yeah, um... I was like, I'm heavy into politics, you know, and then he was like, oh, wow. He was like, so you, I was like, he was like, so you're a Republican. I was like, right. yes, I am. And then he was like, oh, wow, I never met a black Republican. And um, really? and he was like, man, and he smiled and he was like, man, I feel proud to cut, that, that I'm cutting your hair. And then so <laughs> I started talking, and, and the guy in the next chair was a high school friend of mine. So I kept okay. talking, and then we talked about school choice and all this. So I realized what you have to do is, uh, in our community, I, yeah. I believe you need somebody to go first, somebody to take the first step and say, hey, it's okay. It's okay to do. Right. That's exactly, because, yeah. You know, you know, in a lot yeah. of situations, people, it, it, somebody just has to take the first step. And I believe others will follow. Well, you know, that's exactly because right. That's, you have to be a, an organizer, basically, but for, for the good side, you know. 
You're and, right. and two, um, I'm I'm going to venture out. I'm I'm working on T-shirts and slogans and stuff because right. in our community, sad to say, but you all just like the left made Che Guevara cool is cool to wear a Che Guevara T-shirt. I'm yeah. going to be wearing T-shirts with constitutional phrases on them and stuff all summer. I'm going this to make awesome. it cool. Yeah, I that's am awesome. going to make it cool. I'm going to well, have you know, head get, rags. And if more, you know, if people see you, it'll, it'll become a trend. It, you know, people will be like, "Yeah, this is cool. This is the thing to do." You're right. And people ask questions because I, I, I notice it doesn't take much to catch people's attention. Because usually right. as a trucker, I bring my books with me in case I get uh, stuck uh, waiting. Some, you know, uh, in, in case I have a long wait at one of my stops. So I'll go in right. and I'll lay my book on the counter while I'm uh, signing paperwork and stuff. And somebody will say, "What are you reading?" I'm like, um, "Oh," and they say, "What's that about?" And they say, "Oh, it's about our crooked tax system." And then you know, and that it's a conversation starter. Mm-hmm. Something as simple well, as a phrase on a T-shirt or a book you're holding in your hand, those, those simple things are conversation starters. So. You know, once you break the ice, you'd be surprised how curious people are about this stuff. That's right. But but you know what, Trez? That's exactly what you need to do. It has to be somebody like you. It has to be somebody from the African-American community to take the lead and say, you know, it's cool. These people are cool. They want. They just want everybody to be free. They want the America we used to have. You have to take the lead. Yes, you do. But... And the thing is, and this is something else I'm discovering, like i, I got to get this in before it's over. We are conservative. I'm finding that out more than any, because that's what I found out about myself. Like when I heard Rush talking and he was, you know, he, you know, explaining what conservatism is, I'm like, wow, I, fall, I always have uh, fallen into that category. And that's what I'm finding out with a lot of blacks I talk to. We are conservative. We just vote the wrong way. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, it, we've been manipulated. Both sides have been manipulated, you know, to by by political parties for many decades into thinking. And now we're realizing, you know, both parties have been uh, basically brainwashing us to to think a certain way, and it hasn't and been. And you right. have blacks to blame too, because when when I see people like Jim Clyburn, like because uh, as my as blacks, we have people in high places. We we right. got blacks in Congress, you know. We uh, you know, when I see people like John Lewis and uh, Jim Clyburn and Al Sharpton and these people, they know that the school system is screwing us, and they right. they know the re- they have to know the real story, and and they don't do anything. They they let us go along, whole communities. They let us go along brainwashed. Yeah, it's a shame. Well, we're gonna have to leave it there, uh, trust, because we're running out of time. But uh, okay. I'd really, I'd like to thank you for sharing your views on the on the uh, African American community and how we can cross the racial lines in the hopes of reuniting our republic before it's too late. Um, and not a problem. Yeah. So remember, everyone, the 2012 elections will not be about skin color, but rather about saving our republic. Please spread the word about what's really happening to America, and let's all make a difference. Until next time, this is your host, Batmobile, and you've been with us in the Batcave. God bless.